We're going to work through some of the solutions to the practice checkpoint for module 4. Question 1. Study the pattern. Find the first and second differences between the terms. Okay, so that means that we need to find out how much we've added to 5 over 2 to get 9 and how much we've added to 9 to get 39 over 2, etc, etc. So in order to do that, we say 9 subtract 5 over 2. Remember that 9 is 18 over 2, so 18 over 2 subtract 5 over 2 is 13 over 2. And the difference between 9 and 39 over 2 is 21 over 2. 39 less 18 is 21. And the difference between, 39, uh, between 34 and 39 over 2 is 29 over 2. If we now found the differences between the first differences, 21 over 2 subtract 13 over 2 is 8 over 2, which simplifies to 4. 29 over 2 subtract 21 over 2 is also 8 over 2, which simplifies to 4. That means, question B, that our sequence will be a quadratic sequence. And we know that the reason, because the second difference is constant. That is one of the features of all quadratic sequences is that they have a constant second difference. So the moment you get a constant second difference, you know that the sequence is quadratic. Question C, extend the pattern by two terms. So we need to think what would the next difference, first difference be. And you can see that from 13 to 21, we added 8. And from 21 to 29, we've added 8. So that means our next first difference will be 37 over 2. 34 add 37 over 2 is 105 over 2. And our next difference will be 37 plus 8, which is 45 over 2. And 105 over 2 plus 45 over 2 is 75. So the next two terms will be 105 over 2 and 75. Question D, determine the general term of the sequence. We've already said that the pattern is a quadratic pattern, which means that the general term is the, given by a n squared plus b n plus c. So therefore, twice the value of a will equal to 4, because twice a is the constant second difference. 3a plus b will be equal to the first first difference, which is 13 over 2, and a plus b plus c will be equal to the first term, which is 5 over 2. So that gives us a to be equal to 2. If we then substitute 2 in place of a and solve for b, you get b to be a half. And therefore, 2 plus a half plus c is 5 over 2, and that gives you c to be 0. So therefore, your general term is 2n squared plus a half n. Question 3, we're going to specifically look at question 3c. Before we do that though, we're going to need the answer to 3b, which was the midpoint of bc, which was e to be negative 2 and 0. And the question said, hence or otherwise, find the coordinates of d. And the word hence in a mathematics question means that I should be able to use the answer from the previous question to find the answer to this question. So E is the midpoint of BC because the diagonals of a parallelogram, one of the properties, is that they bisect each other, they cut each other in half. So if E is the midpoint of BC, E will also be the midpoint of AD. Okay, so we can use that to set up an equation because we know that if we wanted to find the x-coordinate of, of the midpoint of AD, we would have taken the x-coordinates at D, we would have added the x-coordinates at A, we would have divided it by 2, and that would give us the x-coordinate of the midpoint, which we already know from the previous question is negative 2. So that gives us x of D minus 5 is equal to negative 4, so the x of d will be negative 4 plus 5, which is 1. We can do the same thing with the y-coordinate. If we were going to be finding the y-coordinate of the midpoint, we would take the y-value of d, we would add the y-value of a, divide it by 2, and we know that that answer is 0. So therefore, y of d will be equal to 1. So therefore, the coordinates of d 
all one and one.